Chapter 7, London, England, 1676. In the year 1676, the grand city of London basked in the timeless aura of its rich history. The cobblestone street sliced through a metropolis where the past and present coexisted in a harmonious dance. It was in this ageless jewel that I, Sephiros, descended from the cosmic realms to experience Earth and its enigmatic inhabitants. Earthlings, draped in the intricate attire of their era, navigated London's alleys and bustling marketplaces. They bore the weight of centuries, a living tapestry woven with the threads of time. To me, as an interstellar traveler, they appeared as walking enigmas, carrying with them the wisdom and peculiarities of a brand new civilization. The earthlings were a curious species, their lives punctuated by rituals and customs passed down through the generations. They donned ornate garments, spoke in dialects that spanned the centuries, and paid homage to traditions as old as the civilization itself. Their devotion to the past was both a curse and a cure, I observed, for it truly was both perplexing and endearing. On one fateful night, our celestial vessel descended upon the earthly realm. Our spacecraft, a marvel of interstellar engineering, radiated with the splendors of the universe. It left the earthlings agog, for to them, it was an enigma from the cosmos, a phenomenon that surpassed their terrestrial understanding. From the vessel, we emerged as a collective of beings who hailed from the celestial expanse. To the earthlings, we were celestial travelers, mysterious visitors from beyond their own world. Many of the humans we met approached us and began to gaze upon our physical forms with both amazement and curiosity. As we explored the city, interacting with the earthlings and learning about their ways, I could not help but to notice a peculiar pattern among our many encounters. Many of the humans we met began to become ill immediately after meeting us. Initially, we dismissed it as a mere coincidence. But as more and more individuals fell sick, we could not ignore this correlation any longer. It seemed that our presence was causing some sort of reaction in the earthlings. Our medical team conducted thorough examinations on those affected and eventually discovered that their bodies were having adverse reactions to our energy fields. We quickly realized that this was due to a fundamental difference between our species and the earthlings. Mankind, it seemed, was not yet evolved enough to handle the energies emitted by beings from our own planet. In light of this discovery, we immediately ceased all contact with the humans and returned to the confines of our vessel. In the hours that followed we consulted with our own healers and found a way to dampen our energy fields, allowing us to more safely interact with the earthlings without causing immediate death. But, even with this new precaution in place, we knew that our presence could still cause unintended consequences for these delicate beings. And so, despite our fascination with them, we made the difficult decision to leave Earth and resume our journey through the vastness of space. As we departed from London, I could not help but feel a sense of sadness at leaving behind such an intriguing civilization. But I also knew that it was for their own safety and preservation. Our encounter may have been brief, but it left a lasting impact on both us and the Earthlings. Ultimately, we continued on our interstellar journey, traversing through galaxies and encountering countless other more evolved civilizations along our way. But none could compare to the unique charm and inexplicable connection I felt towards the delicate and sickly humans of Earth. As I reminisced about my time on the lovely blue planet, a part of me longed for our paths to cross again. However, deep down, I knew that such a reunion would only bring turmoil and chaos to Earth. Our scientists predicted that it would take three or four Earth centuries for humans to develop the antibodies needed to coexist with our species. Four centuries seemed like an eternity, but I could not help but wonder if it would be worth the wait. Even now, many years later as I continue to reflect upon my travels, my mind often wanders back to that fateful night in the great city of London, on the planet Earth, where the enigmatic Earthlings had unknowingly captivated my curiosity and opened my eyes to the wonders of a new world.